so this morning I am canning up some chicken. Um, I par, par cooked some chicken. It's not cooked all the way through, just enough to get it warm so I can put it in the warm jars. I got some um, better than bouillon warm. And I'm going to put some chipotles in some of them and some onions. Um, some I'll keep plain, but I, I wanted to have a couple that were just a little bit different. So that is what I'm doing today, canning up some chicken, um, some chipotle chicken, and some not. Sorry for Gunner, he's kind of being an asshole this morning. All right, I'll show you when I'm all done. So I thought I'd show you um, how I get, um, well, how I get pack one of the jars. So I'm going to go ahead and take my hot chicken. These jars have been in my oven at 200 degrees to keep them nice and hot. Because when you are putting hot food into, can if you're canning hot food, you need to put them into hot jars. Hot food, hot jars, hot liquid. I mean, and your canner needs to be hot too. If, you, if the chicken was um, raw, I would want to put them in room temperature jars with room temperature liquid and a room temperature canner. Um, this prevents thermal shock to the jars, which you do not want because... In the canning process, you could lose like the bottom of the jar and it would make a huge mess and then you'd lose all that effort. Um, you don't want to do that. So I'm trying to fill these jars about two thirds the way fill or full. I'm kind of packing it down a little bit to see how much I can add. Maybe a couple pieces. Should be good. Okay. Now I'm going to add a Chipotle pepper, and some of the juice in there, nice and spicy, and then I'll add some onions, don't worry, my hands are super clean, I'm a compulsive hand washer, and so I've washed my hands like 50,000 times already. Okay, so I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon of canning salt. I'm going to take my broth. This is just better than bouillon in some um, distilled water. When you can um, and you are adding a liquid to your to your uh, jar, you do not want to use tap water. And the reason why is, uh, especially if you have hard water, it will leave a sediment at the bottom of your jars. And even though it's not, it's not there's nothing wrong with it. It's not going to hurt you. It just looks kind of crappy. Um, and it just, yeah, it looks kind of gross. So I always just use like a bottled distilled water and then add the better than bouillon to this. Or you could use broth or you could use water, yeah, whatever. As long as it's hot, just like your the food that you have in there, I'm running out of broth, um, then you're good. And let me push this down. Maybe I'll be able to have enough okay and then I take this little pokey thing when you are canning and you are canning like solid stuff like this you want to make sure you take all the air bubbles out of your jar if you do not do this um it can bubble up in the canner and um it could siphon out so that you'll use lose a lot of liquid um and that just is not I'm, uh, it, this stuff is fine. I get siphoning all the time, but my siphoning is usually because I'm impatient and I don't let them sit in the canner after it's processed. I've realized that. Last time I did some canning, I made myself wait, and sure enough, I didn't have any siphoning. So we're going to keep doing that uh, process. Okay, so this one is full, a one inch headspace. I'm going to take my little paper towel, dip it in my white vinegar back here, and then you're going to clean your rim. You need a very clean rim. This will help make sure that it seals. Um, you don't want dirty rim. And since I'm using chicken, which is fatty, I want to make sure I use vinegar to like break down that fat that might be on the rim and prevent a seal. So then I take my lid, put that on, and my ring, just fingertip tight. And these jars are super hot, so I'm going to use my little lifter. And then it's going to go in here into its little hot tub with its brothers and sisters. So, so far i got um, 
two pint and a half and two two pints. I'm gonna finish this up. I'm probably gonna have to make more broth. Um, but hopefully I could have this thing filled up before um before I start it. So fingers crossed. So looky here, I got a pretty much a full canner. I got three pint and a half and four pints. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the remaining vinegar I had for cleaning the rims and throw it in there. <clears throat> Um, this will keep the jars from having a sediment on the outside of them after they're cooked and it'll make it easier to clean them after. Um, you don't have to do it. It's just a thing. If you have hard water, um, it helps keep the jars nice and nice and pretty. Um, I'm sure you're supposed to clean them after, you know, they sit for the 24 hours anyway. Um, but I just go ahead and throw the vinegar in there because what else am I going to do with it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get this um, going because there is no timing for pint and a half so I'm going to use the timing for quartz um, for meat it is 90 minutes um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the lid on here I'm going to crank this stove up and I'm going to get this um, steam coming out of the uh, pitcock for a solid 10 minutes then I'll go ahead and put the weight on and when it gets to 11 pounds of pressure uh, the reason why it's 11 pounds is because I'm using a canner with a uh, dial gauge. Um, once it gets to 11 pounds of pressure and kind of stays there, I will go ahead and start the um, timer and we'll get it going for 90 minutes. If it goes under the 11 pounds of pressure, you have to restart the time. Um, that's why when I am turning down the um, heat as it's, it's processing, I do it very slowly and then usually with my stove it holds the 11 pounds of pressure between um, medium low and medium um, so I just kind of work down that temperature um, very very slowly and because I have a glass top, glass top stove it, it, there's kind of a delay from when I turn it down into when that temperature actually gets to that level um, so I'm I'm pretty much standing here the entire 90 minutes and being very careful when I'm turning down the heat because I do not want to restart the process. First of all, I don't want to stand here all day. And second of all, this stuff is going to be mush um, if I have to keep restarting the time. I did end up doing all Chipotle chicken because I have a ton of regular chicken downstairs and I still had that can of Chipotle's and why the hell not, right? Um, so... I'm going to get this going, and I'll show you when the steam's coming out so you know what to look for. So my canner, I don't know if you can see it, but the steam is coming out full full speed. I'm going to go ahead and set the timer for 10 minutes um, and let this uh, vent the steam. You, This is a very important part of the process. You have to let it do its thing. Um, Otherwise, I don't know what happens, but it's probably not good. I don't know. It's part of the process, so you just do it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set the timer for 10 minutes and let this um, vent the steam. Okay, so my timer just went out, um, went off. So now it is time to put the weight on the pitcock right there. I'm not going to like get my hands near it because it's freaking hot. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully put my weight on. Um, and then I'm going to watch my dial. You already see it's already at like maybe one or one or two psi. I'm gonna wait for it to get to that little mark right after ten at eleven psi's, um, and that's when I'll start my timer. But as it's going up to um, pressure, I'm going to start gradually reducing the heat. Um, I don't want to do it too fast because then it'll drop the psi, um, and especially if I get over eleven. Um, and I start my time, I do not want to drop under there because then I have to restart. And who the hell wants to do that? Um, so you can see there's already pressure building up in the canner. You can see how the um, little safety valve back there is popped up and it's bubbling some water out. Um, you don't want to open the lid at this point uh, or it's like a bomb. Uh, we don't want that. So you can already see it's like raising in pressure. I'm going to turn it down about a half a notch on the stove and I'm just going to keep doing that. So once it gets up to 11 psi I'll show you and we'll start the timer and hopefully we'll have some great ass chicken when we're done. Okay as you can see we are at 11 pounds of pressure. I'm going to go ahead and start my timer for 90 minutes and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stay close. You don't have to like stand in front of the canner the entire time. 
Um, but I'm going to stand, I'm going to be around um, to keep checking it and making sure it stays where it's supposed to. If it goes a little higher, that's fine. Um, we just don't want it to drop under the 11. Also, I did forget to mention, the reason why I can at 10 pounds of pressure is because of the altitude. I'm under 1,000 feet, um, so you can at 10 pounds of pressure, or in this case because it's a dial gauge can or 11. If you're over 11 or over 1,000 feet, it's 15, um, and you also add time. I'm not quite sure of all the details with that, so if you're over 1,000 feet, um, go ahead and, and you know look up on the National Center for Home Food Preservation. It has the correct pounds of pressure for your altitude and the um, minutes that you need to add, if any, um, based on what you're canning. So. I'm going to go ahead and just hang around here and deal with this awful puppy. Oh my god, he is being so bad today. He's getting into everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and hang around here, deal with him, keep an eye on this. As you can see, it's already going a little above. No big deal. I'll just adjust the um, temperature just a tad. Um, and in 90 minutes, I will take this off the heat and we will g get it resting before I take the jars out. All right, so my um, timer went off, so it is done processing. I went ahead and turned off the stove, and then I lifted it very gently and moved it over to a burner that um, was not on so that it can cool down. Now, what I want to do is it needs to get down to zero pressure, and then this little um, safety valve needs to pop down, well, it'll drop down, and then I can take off the weight. Um, that usually takes about a half an hour for me, uh, so I'll just kind of, you know, hang around, do some more um, chores or whatever, and let that get down to zero pressure, and then I will crack the lid. I won't remove it totally. I'll crack the lid, kind of put it, you know, a little skewed on the uh, top of it, and let it sit for um, 10 minutes, and um, that's the part that I was getting siphoning before because I would I didn't crack the lid and let it sit. I just kind of let it go down, crack the lid, and pulled them out, which you don't want to do that because it'll, um, like, kind of, you know, the liquid will evaporate as they sit and rest. So I will come back when it is time to pull these babies out. So the, um, the um, valve drop down. It's at zero pounds of pressure. I looked in my ball canning book and it actually said um, to take off the weight and then wait an additional two minutes um, before cracking the lid. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, we're almost at the uh, two minute wait, but I did want to show you um, my books. So this, the ball complete book of home preserving is like the, the Bible of, um, of, canning and also it has um, information in there about dehydrating and I think there's fermenting. Um, I haven't used that part of it. But anyway, I checked this trusty book. I have this thing and I look at it all the time. It has all the right times, um, the right pressure, and it tells you exactly what to do. So this is, this is a, a good one to have on hand. Um, the Amish canning book is another favorite. The recipes in there are awesome and the times are exactly the way they're supposed to be um, from the the ball book which comes from the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Um, they've done extensive research on the right times to make sure that the botulism is killed and that your family doesn't get sick. So it is absolutely critical to make sure that you're following all the directions and all the steps and the timing and using um, recipes that have been uh, tested that's more so important with um, water bath canning um, but even with pressure canning you there's certain things you don't want to can um, such as any sort of thickener no cornstarch no flour no rice no noodles you know any of that kind of stuff um, cannot be canned but pretty much everything else, there, there's probably, you know, a recipe that tells you how to incorporate that into your, into your dish or whatever you're trying to can. Now, the Ball Blue Book, um, Guide to Preserving, I don't know. I feel like if you have the, the main um, complete book, you don't need this. I picked it up at um, Rural King because it was like nine bucks or something. Um, but as I've gone through it, it's just pretty much repeating uh, the stuff from the other ball book. So I am 
you know, I don't think it's a necessary book, but it's nice to have on hand. There's, a, I think, a couple different recipes I didn't see in the other one. So, anyway, those are the books, and um, I'm going to go ahead and crack this lid and let it sit for the 10 minutes. Okay, so the 10 minutes is up. Actually, I let it sit a little bit longer, um, you know, just to kind of cool down a little bit. I'm trying to not get the siphoning that I've been getting. Um, so I am going to pull these out. And now I did notice, if you see, the, the, the water is kind of cloudy. So I'm hoping that's not, you know, like for a really bad reason. Um, it might just be when I was letting it vent for the 10 minutes, I maybe it was just venting too hard. Um, I'm not quite sure, but at the same time, I, I hope, <laughs> I hope none of these jars broke. Um, I'm going to pull them out, you know, carefully. And then I'm going to put them over here on a mat. You don't want to put your hot jars on a cold countertop. Otherwise that whole, um, tempering, you know, the jar will crack or, you know, you, you make a mess. You don't really want that. So I'm going to pull them all out and I'm going to put them on here. They will sit here for 24 hours. Um, I usually check the seals after an hour or two. Be and the reason why I do that is because I don't, if, if, if something didn't seal properly, I don't want it to sit there for 24 hours and then it's no good. So this way, if something didn't seal for any reason, I can let it cool down and then I can pop it in the fridge um, to be used right away. But they should stay there without being moved or messed with um, for the 24 hours. I don't know if you heard that little ping, which is what you want to hear. That means that the jar sealed. Um, so that's that's like music to the canner's ear. Um, that's what you want to hear. So I'm going to pull these out and I will show you after they're all out. All right, so I pulled them all out. Um, I've already gotten all the um, pint and a half have sealed, um, and it looks like one of the um, pint jars sealed. These other ones are um, taking a little longer, apparently. Um, and as you can see, if you look at the top of some of these jars, you can see how um, obviously some liquid came out of there. Um, this one actually sealed, so that's good. I'm going to really pay close attention to this guy, this guy. And this guy because they have not sealed yet which is perfectly fine it can take several hours um i actually no i haven't had it take longer than an hour but anyway i'll keep an eye on those to make sure that they seal um and if not like i said i will put them in the fridge and we'll just go ahead and have it for dinner tonight so you'll see how they're still bubbling a little in here Another thing I've been doing, or that I've done the last couple times to try to prevent siphoning, is I'm going to put a dishcloth over these. Um, since the house is very cool with the air conditioning, I don't want them to cool too quickly and lose some of the um, some of the liquid in the jars. So I'm going to put that over them and then let them sit. But this is pretty much it, and it's actually about noon. I started this probably about 8 15 8 30 um this one was a little longer because i had to part part cook the chicken and make the broth and all that but um it's 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 a long process you know it it's time consuming uh make sure you have some time set out in your day don't rush the process you know there there's a reason why these times are set um you want your food to be safe you know you do not want to take any shortcuts when it comes to canning um just set aside a chunk of your day and do it correctly and you'll come out with some beautiful food i mean look how great these look um it's gonna be so good we'll probably use these for like you know um like burritos or you know enchiladas or something like that so now i have probably six pounds of um chipotle chicken to use so it's pretty exciting it'll be nice on my um my pantry shelves and I will show you get that when I go put these away tomorrow these are just going to sit and hang out here then after about 12 to 24 hours I will remove all the rings I'll wash them thoroughly and then I will put them away I'll mark you know like date and what they are and then put them downstairs so hope you enjoyed this little canning session and um I know I'm not like a pro videographer but you know it is what it is I just use my phone. So anyway, if you're interested in canning, um, I say give it a shot. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I may not know all the answers, but I can tell you where to go to get them. So have a good day, everyone.